Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at chemical formulae. First we're going to look at writing formulae from diagrams. When we do this, we look at the elements present and we count up how many of each there are and we write them with a subscript number. So for the first one, we have one carbon. Where you have one of an element, we do not put the number. We've then got two oxygens, so the two goes to the right and slightly below. For this next example, we have one nitrogen and three hydrogens, NH3. Here we have water. We've got two hydrogens and one oxygen. And then finally methane, where we have one carbon and four hydrogens. Here are four more examples for you to try. Pause the video now. So in this first example, we have carbon monoxide. We have one carbon and one oxygen. So we don't require any numbers in the formulae. In the second example, we have one phosphorus and three hydrogens. Here we have one sulfur and two fluorine. And in this example, we have three different elements. So we have one carbon, one chlorine and three hydrogens. Sometimes you'll get given the names of compounds and occasionally they will have what we call prefixes in them to tell you how many atoms are present. The prefixes that we use are shown in this table. So where the prefix is mono, we have one atom. Where it's di, we have two tri for three, tetra for four, penta for five, and hexa for six. So how do we go about using these prefixes? So here we have a couple of examples. The first step is to identify the symbols from the name using the periodic table. So in this example, we have carbon, which is a C, and monoxide, so oxide for oxygen, which is an O. Step two is to add in any subscripts. So in this name, we have carbon monoxide. Carbon doesn't have any prefix, so we're going to assume that there is only one carbon and the monoxide means that there's only one oxygen. So putting that together, we have CO for the name. In the second example, we have carbon dioxide. So step one is to identify the symbols. The symbols will be the same because we have carbon and oxygen. And then step two is to add the subscripts. So again, we've only got one carbon, but this time we have di for dioxide. So we've got two oxygens, so we can put in a two beside the oxygen. Here's some examples for you to try. Pause the video now and give them a go. You'll need a periodic table. So in the first example, so at the top I'm going to write up the steps that we're going to follow. So step one will always be identify the symbols. And step two will be to add the subscripts. So for our first example, we have nitrogen dioxide. So the symbols that we're using are N for nitrogen and O for oxide. And we need to add the subscripts. We only have nitrogen with no prefix, so we're just going to have one. And we have di for the oxygen, so we're going to put in two. The second example, we have sulfur, which is an S, and oxygen again, which is an O. 
there's no prefix with sulfur so it's going to be one and we have tri for oxide so we're going to put a three beside the oxygen. The next example looks trickier but you need to look out for the names of elements. So we have dinitrogen, dioxide. So we have N for nitrogen and O for oxygen. We have a di for the nitrogen, which is two, and a di for the oxygen, which is also two. And then our final example, we have carbon, which is C, and tetrachloride, chloride being Cl for chlorine. There is no prefix with the carbon, so it's one, and a prefix of tetra with the chloride is four. Sometimes the names don't have prefixes and then we can use the periodic table to help us work out what the formula would be. Each element has what we call a valency and this is the number of bonds that it's able to form. The periodic table has been arranged in such a way that you can determine the valency from where the element is on the periodic table. So this table at the bottom shows you the different valencies. So everything in group 1 has a valency of 1 so can form one bond. Everything in group two can form two bonds. Everything in group three can form three bonds. Group four can form four bonds, and then it starts to go down. So group five can form three bonds. Group six can form two. Group seven can form one. And the noble gases, group eight or zero, don't form any bonds. Page six of your data book is a good one to use, as it only has these groups of the periodic table shown. So we're going to use this little table to help us write the names for some compounds. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write the symbols for the elements and we're going to write them in a little circle. So sodium, if we look it up, is Na and we're going to put a circle around it. And then chloride is chlorine, which is Cl, and we're going to put a circle around it. We're then going to add a line to this circle to show the valency. So for sodium, it's in group one, so it has a valency of one, so we're gonna put one line. And chlorine is in group seven, so also has a valency of one, so we're gonna put one little line. We're then going to match up the, all the lines that we can, so we've got the opposite colors touching. So here we can see that one sodium matches up with one chlorine. So this means that the symbol is NaCl. So that's our chemical formula for sodium chloride. Let's try the same again, but with magnesium chloride. So the symbol for magnesium is Mg, and we're going to put a circle around it. And the symbol for chloride, Cl for chlorine. And now we need to put in the valency. So magnesium is in group two. So it has a valency of two, so it needs to have two lines this time. Whereas chlorine still just has one. We're then going to match up opposite colours and we can see that we do not have enough chlorines to match up with the magnesium. So what we now need to do is add in another chloride and match it up with that empty arm of the magnesium so that everything is joined up. We now just count out what we've got, so we've got one magnesium but this time we've got two chlorides. Pause the video now and try these examples using the table and the periodic table to help you. So sodium oxide, we need to look up the symbol for sodium, which is Na. We put a circle around it and we can put in the valency. So it's in group one, so it has one line. And then oxygen, symbol of O, put a circle around it and find its valency. It's in group six, so it has a valency of two. So we're going to match up what we can and we can only match up a sodium with an oxygen. You're not allowed to match up the same element to itself. So we can see here that oxygen has one extra valency that is not taken up yet. So we need to add in an extra sodium and join that up to the oxygen. It's now a case of just counting what you have 
So we have two sodiums and one oxygen, Na2O. So magnesium oxide, symbol for magnesium, it's Mg. It's in group two, so it has a valency of two. And then oxygen, it's O. Put a circle around it, it's in group six with a valency of two. Also has two lines. So we can now join each of these lines up to each other and we have our formulae, MgO. So aluminium has a symbol of Al. Aluminium is in group three. So aluminium has three lines. Chlorine has a symbol of Cl is in group 7 with a valency of 1. So we can see that we can join one chlorine up with one of the valencies there of the aluminium, but we still have two spare valencies here. Now we can only add in a chlorine to fill those up. So we need to add two extra chlorines to make sure everything has been joined up. So now counting what we have, we have one aluminium, and three chlorines, so AlCl3. So moving on to carbon fluoride. So carbon has a valency of four because it's in group four. And fluorine is like chlorine and is in group seven, so it has a valency of one. So we can join our little fluorine up there to one of the carbons, but we've got three spare valencies and we're only allowed to join fluorines onto those. So we can go around and put in another three fluorines. And this gives us the formula of CF4. So hydrogen oxide, hydrogen has a valency of one, you'll find it in group one. In some periodic tables, it's not written right above group one, it's written in the middle of the periodic table, kind of floating, but it is in group one. So we're going to put a valency of one. Oxygen is in group six, the valency of two. So we can join up one of the valencies of oxygen with the hydrogen, and then we can go and add in an extra hydrogen there to fill that picture. So our formula for this one is H2O. So hydrogen oxide is another name for water. And our last example, aluminium oxide. So aluminium we've dealt with, it's in group three with a valency of three. Oxygen is in group six with a valency of two. So this is one of the trickier ones. We've got one spare valency on the aluminium and we can only add an oxygen onto that. When we do that, we then end up with a spare valency on the oxygen. And the only thing you can add to that would be another aluminium. So you keep going from one side to the other until there are no valencies left that need filled. Which means for this case, we now have two aluminiums and three oxygens, Al2O3. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for regular updates on new videos and flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now.